So, with Apple starting their M4 journey inside the iPad Pro that will come down to the MacBook Pro and we will also see the M4 Pro and M4 Max inside the MacBook Pro Series 2, how does this compare to the new Snapdragon X Elite and X Plus in benchmarks? Well, the good news is, is that Snapdragon themselves have actually leaked their own benchmarks to share with us so we can actually do a full comparison here to the M4, the M3 Series 2. So today, what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to show you all the scores from CPU to graphic scores too. So to make this fair, first of all, I'm going to compare the new Qualcomm Snapdragon X Plus Series chipset compared to the M3 chipset. So we're going to do that first of all, and this would be the base configuration. So for the M3, I'm talking like a MacBook Air, just like we've got right here, comparing that to, say, the Surface Pro with the baseline configuration. So let's have a look then at the scores first of all for this. So we have the Snapdragon X Plus with its 10 core version here, what is in the blue, and we have the Apple M3 chip, which is also an 8 core version here in the comparison. And then starting out then with single core performance, you can see straight away that the M3 with its 8 core setup is still miles ahead here than what we have with the new Snapdragon X Plus. We're getting a score of about 3,100 compared to around about 2,400 in single core performance with the Snapdragon. And as we know already, quite a lot of apps still today just use single core performance to run the actual apps. You know, there is obviously a bit of a 50-50 split here. Some use multi-core, some use single core. So actually to have a higher single core performance, that is a big advantage here for Apple with the M3. But moving over to the multi-core performance, you can see here that actually the Snapdragon, obviously because it has two more cores, I think this is the main reason behind this, is actually sitting at around about 12,900 in multi-core performance in Geekbench 6 compared to just about 12,000 what we have with the M3. Then moving over to Cinebench 2024 and with the single here, you can see the difference there that obviously we're pushing out a far higher amount here with the single core performance with actually the M3 again compared to what we have with the Snapdragon X Plus. Then with Cinebench again with multi-core sort of performance here or multi-thread performance, you can actually see then for example that the Snapdragon X Plus is actually ahead here again Again, mainly because I think it's got those two extra cores. But the most interesting one I think is to do with graphics here. This is a 3D Mark Wildlife sort of frames per second test here. And as you can see right here, that obviously the M3 chip is definitely way ahead. Now, obviously, we had the M3 came out around about sort of early November last year, and now we have the new M4 chipset. So how does that compare to this? Well, let's take a look. And do remember, though, we can't run all the same tests because we don't have the M4 inside of a Mac. We, can, we are only going to do things like Geekbench and a few things like that. But let's have a look here. So here then again, we have the Snapdragon in blue and we have the M4 10 core in green. So this is a 10 core to a 10 core comparison this time. So maybe this is a little bit more fairer in your eyes, but you can see straight away, look at that single core performance there of the M4. It is miles ahead compared to what we have with the Snapdragon X Plus. And then for multi-core performance, again, it is definitely ahead here. You can see the difference here, 12,900 compared to 14,000 and about 600 compared with the M4 multi-core performance in Geekbench 6. So moving on then to the next chipset, and this is the X Elite chipset from Snapdragon. Now again, what I was gonna say then with the actual X Elite, there's actually two versions of this chipset as you can see right here. We actually have the 80,100, what has a normal operating speed of 3.4 gigahertz and 16 gigabytes of RAM. But there is also a faster 84,100 version, what is clocked at 3.8 gigahertz, and this is paired with 64 gigabytes of RAM. So to make this a bit more fairer, what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to compare the 8100 to say the M3 Pro what is available right now because I think that's a more of a fairer inline sort of test that we will have. So let's have a look at the scores right here. 
So again, the Snapdragon is in blue and the M3 Pro is also in green. Now, both of these chipsets have got 12 cores inside of them. So let's have a look at this comparison then. And straight away, you can see that obviously the M3 Pro is definitely ahead than this X Elite here at 3.4 gigahertz. Let's have a look at the scores then. So for single core performance, we're at 3,152 compared to 2,775. So definitely getting better performance there. And then with multi-core performance, we're getting 14,300 compared to 15,632 then with the M3 Pro versus this Elite X Elite chipset in Geekbench 6 in multi-core. But then moving over to Cinebench then, 2024. Let's have a look at the single thread here. The so single thread here on the Elite is giving us 122 versus 142, whereas with multi-thread here on Cinebench 2024, we've got 950 versus about 1060, what is absolutely crazy. But again, what I will say is the most remarkable thing here is got to do with graphics. Take a look here. It does say here for doing a 3D mark, wildlife, test here, frames per second, we were getting 39 frames per second on the X Elite, where we were getting 88 frames per second on the M3 Pro. That is over double the amount of frames per second, and that is absolutely crazy in graphics performance, what we get in M3 Pro compared to the Snapdragon X Elite at 3.4 gigahertz. So looking at this chart again, you can definitely see that obviously the M3 Pro is still miles ahead, and we don't even have the M4 Pro yet. But there is one thing that is happening on this channel very soon, and that is the giveaway we're doing on this channel for this at the end of June time giveaway. That's right, guys. I'm giving away one of these, a 14-inch M3 MacBook Pro. And it's not just any ordinary MacBook Pro. This one actually has 16 gigabytes of RAM instead of the base eight gigabytes of RAM. And then also inside of this too, we've got 512 gigabytes of storage. It's the normal M3. And I'm gonna be giving it away to one lucky subscriber on this channel on this international giveaway that we are doing. And all you have to do to enter in is just put down in the comments below of what Apple gear, what technology gear you're planning to get in 2024. Put it down in the comments below right now. And also if you are brand new here, make sure you are a subscriber to this channel because like I said, I'm gonna be giving it away to one lucky subscriber. But what I would also say to do is make sure you subscribe to this channel and also hit that notification bell because I'll be making an Announcement at the end of June time, what you won't want to miss, but we'll give all the details, including a little form to fill out, and also when I'm gonna do the live stream of this MacBook Pro with the M3 inside of it too. One thing I would also say though, guys, sadly there are still lots of scammers and spammers, people still impersonating me, telling you to WhatsApp, Telegram, part with your money for postage and things like this, which is really bad. This is not me at all. I'll be paying for postage and taxes and things like that on this international giveaway. So please do ignore them, or better still, if you seem like this, please do report them. So finally, let's talk about the last chipset then to talk about. And this is the new Snapdragon X Elite, and this is the 84100 chipset. And we're gonna compare this to the M3 Max. So again, we have in blue here the Snapdragon X Elite at 3.8 gigahertz with 12 cores inside of it compared to the Apple M3 Max with the 14 core version. Like I said, this is the baselines of both of these. So let's have a look then. So even though the Snapdragon has 64 gigabytes of RAM compared to the actual 36 gigabytes of RAM, you can actually still see that the actual M3 Max is still miles ahead. One thing I would say is obviously Obviously for single core performance, it does look like that this time round that the Snapdragon X Elite with 3.8 gigahertz running at that speed has caught up quite a bit here. It still hasn't hit that 3000 boundary yet, but you can see it's close there, 2900 compared to 3159 there. But in Geekbench 6 multi-core performance, still the M3 Max, maybe because it has those two extra cores, is still way ahead. We have 15,200 for the X Elite at 3.8 gigahertz, compared to 19,400 or so 
for the actual M3 Max, and that is absolutely amazing to see. Again, for single thread performance here on Cinebench 2024, it's 127 to 142, so there's a little bit more of a gap here compared to the single core performance on Geekbench 6, but still it's just behind here, but there again, for multi-thread in Cinebench 2024, it's 1,170 compared to 1,373. So again, the M3 Max is definitely ahead here. And this is amazing performance to see from both of these chipsets. But there again, what is really leaps and bounds ahead is the graphics performance. So look here and you can actually see that we're getting 43 frames per second on 3D Mark Wildlife. And yeah, compared to the 118 frames per second, what the M3 Max here gives us on the base configuration, we're talking on average around about three times the performance, just under three times the performance here. What is absolutely unbelievable. So what I say what we could take away from here is definitely that the M3 in multi-core performance just for that is a little bit behind here than what we have then say with the Snapdragon Plus. But for everything else on all other sort of bits and pieces, single core performance even on the M3 is still leaps and bounds ahead of you know the snapdragon x plus and then for the elite well as you saw here the m3 pro and the m3 max completely you know quashes everything here with the snapdragon x elite what we're getting there what's well, absolutely amazing to see it's crazy to see that but what i would say is obviously we did see the scores for the m4 versus the actual snapdragon x plus and i can imagine that when we get the m4 pro and the m4 max it's going to be even a further sort of distance between the snapdragon but one one thing that I would say is that Snapdragon have said that obviously that they can do 14 trillion operations per second in sort of machine learning sort of speeds compared to where on average with the M3 we only get about 38,000 there instead so we are a little bit behind there but the other thing as well is obviously Windows have put down their cards here with Qualcomm that they've shown loads of AI abilities and we haven't really got many AI abilities in the OS of say macOS Sonoma right now but obviously we do have WWDC 2024 coming up and where we will see macOS 15 whatever that's going to be called and we're expecting lots of AI features that are going to take complete advantage of that neural engine so that is going to be quite exciting to see there in the next month or so but with that though guys what are your thoughts on this what do you think of the Snapdragon chipset do you think it's good do you think it's a good competitor just to start out with and do you think it maybe will overtake eventually the M sort of series. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And also guys, if you want to hear the latest Apple news reviews and comparisons, also make sure you subscribe to the channel and also hit that notification bell too. Until next time guys, I'll see you really soon. Take care now. Bye bye.